All right, here are solutions to quiz six from math to 11. Uh, this first problem, you're asked to multiply the two of these numbers, uh, but specifically using the lattice method. So the idea behind the lattice method is the two numbers that you're multiplying together, you kind of write one normally, I guess, horizontally, and then the other one vertically. And what that does is it sort of creates this grid, not the prettiest work ever. It's a little hard to do on a computer. I'm making excuses for my bad work. And what I'm going to have to do is fill out this grid. Um, but before I fill out the grid, I'm going to kind of draw these diagonal lines because I'm going to end up adding along these diagonal lines. It's a little hard to do on a computer. Maybe I'll do that one a little better. I should stop making excuses. Okay, so now that I have these diagonal lines, all I got to do is go filling out all of the boxes. So in this box, for example, I'll figure out six times two. Six times two is 12, so I'll write the one up here and the two down here. Six times eight is 48. So I'll write the four up here and the eight down here. Six times five is 30. Write the three here, the zero here. Two times two is four, so I'll write it as zero, four. Two times eight is 16. One and a six, two times five is 10. One and a zero, two times three is six. Zero and a six, eight times three is 24. 3 times 5 is 15, and 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32, and finally 5 times 4 is 20. Now that you filled out this whole grid, all you got to do is add along the diagonals. So in this first diagonal, I just got this 0 right here. But in this one, I have 8 plus 3 plus 0, which is 11. So I'll write a 1 here and carry a 1 up there. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 1 plus 3. Well, let's see, here's 10, 13, and 6 more is 19. So I'll carry the nine, uh, or sorry, I'll write the nine and carry one up into the next column here. And then six, two, and two is 10, two, oh, wrong column. Shoot, I was supposed to carry that one into this column. Now I got one, two, uh, and eight gives me 10, and two more gives me 12. So I'll write a two here and carry a one up to this column. And then 1, 0, 6, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4, 6, 12, 13. There's a 3, carry a 1. Uh, 8 and 3 is 11, plus 1 more is 12. Carry the 1 with the 0 as a 1. Um, so answer is uh, 1,232,910. And that's what's called the lattice method. On this next problem, you're doing division, but specifically you're told to use the scaffolding method. So the idea with the scaffolding method is you start out with this 125,970. Um, and then I want to remove chunks of 85. So how many 85s am I sure that I have in here? Well, I think I got 1,000 of them. 1,000 times 85 would be 85,000. Um, so I can get rid of this many 85s, and let's see, if I got rid of that many, I would have left 4970, 40,970. And so I still have a lot of 85s left. Um, let's see. I almost have, let's, I almost have 500 of them, but not quite. Um, it turns out I have 400 of them. You might see that you have 400 of them, or if you don't see that you have 400 of them, 100 of them would be 8,500. Uh, so maybe I'll take out 200 because 200 of them, I can do mental math pretty easy to figure out that that's 17,000. And that might not have been the smartest chunk to take out because as you'll see, I have a lot left here. I have 23,970, um, but that's totally fine. Take out another 200. As I saw above, 200 of these 85s is 17,000. And if I subtract that, what I'd have left is 6,970. So yeah, I could have taken that all out in one 400 chunk, but maybe you didn't immediately see that there are 400, so you took out 200 and then took out 200 more. Totally fine, that's the advantage of the scaffolding method. Um, all right, so 6,970, well, um, I could take out 50, and the reason I know I could take out 50 is I can do 50 times 85 in my head. Um, 50 times 80, would be 4,000, 
and 50 times 5 would be 250. So I got 4250 if I uh, take 85 multiplied by 50. And now if you subtract, you get 2720, 2720. Uh, so the question is, how many 85s are there in 2720? Well, um, same thing. You kind of have to ballpark how many you can take out. Uh, I saw above that 200 was 17,000. So maybe I'll do 20 and know that that would be 1,700. Um, so that I can, can subtract and get 10, 20 left over. Uh, and now maybe just play it safe and take out 10 at a time. 10 of these is 850. Uh, and if you subtract 850 from 1,020, let's see, 12 minus 5 is 7. Uh, that makes that 9. I have 170 left. And exactly two 85s would be 170. So if I take out two more, I finally reduce my total to zero. What that means is there's no remainder. So the answer is, see, I have 1,000 plus 400 plus 80 plus 2. Sounds like 1,482 uh, with no remainder. Remainder is zero if you want. Uh, that's what's called the scaffolding method. You don't have to take out the numbers in this order, so the answers may look different, but this is one way that you can talk yourself through this stuff. All right, next problem has to do with order of operations. What is 4 plus 6 divided by 2 plus 4 minus 3 times 2 equal to? Well, the trick here is you have to be careful with your order of operations. Um, first, you're looking for parentheses. There are none. Then you're looking for exponents. There are none. Then you look for multiplication and division. I got some here, and I got some here. And you want to do all multiplication and division, and in the order from left to right. So what I'm saying is I want to say this is 4 plus, and then 6 divided by 2 is 3, plus 4 minus 6. 6 being 3 times 2. Uh, now all I have left is addition and subtraction. And so what I want to do is all my addition and subtraction from left to right. So 4 plus 3 is 7. Um, and 7 plus 4 is 11. And 11 minus 6 is 5. So this thing up top is equal to 5. And now it's saying add one set of parentheses to make this thing equal to 16. Hmm, 16 is quite a bit bigger than 5. Uh, I'm going to make this number a lot bigger. Maybe if I can multiply a whole bunch of stuff here. So what would happen if I threw the parentheses here? Well, I would still say do the division first. And so I would get 4 plus 3 plus 4 minus 3, and that whole thing times 2. Um, and 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 4 is 11, minus 3 is 8. So this is 8 times 2, which is exactly 16. So I think throwing the parentheses in that spot will make this thing equal to 16. Uh, you might have to guess and check a little bit to get there. It's a lot easier when you know the answer, but call that good. Um, this one said, add two sets of parentheses to make this thing equal to 7. Okay, um, well, I don't remember where these parentheses go to tell you the truth, but let's just kind of start messing with it. 4 plus 6 would give me 10 if I threw them here, and 10 divided by 2 would be 5. I need this thing to equal to 7. So I've used up these three. Uh, can I get 7 out of this thing? Or sorry, can I get 2 more out of this thing? And I can if I, here we go, throw the parentheses right there. Because right, if you throw the parentheses here, maybe I should have written this a little bit better. Uh, you would first do 4 plus 6 to get 10. And then 4 minus 3 to get 1. And then if you stare at this thing, you do the division first and the multiplication going from left to right there, and 5 plus 2 equals 7. So I think the parentheses in those spots would make this equal to 7. Other answers might be possible, I don't know. Um, but those are two possible solutions. Uh, finally, the mental math stuff. Okay, so this first one, 699 times 701. Um, well, turns out that this is going to be 1 less than 700 times 700. And so 700 times 700 is a 49 with four zeros after it. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So instead of 49, I want 48, 49, 999. And the reason it's one less than this 
is really because what I'm doing is 699 is 700 minus 1, and 701 is 700 plus 1. And if you multiply these together, if you FOIL everything out, you get 700 squared minus 1 squared. Um, so that's why this works. But really what we talked about in class is just kind of noticing that you can do that. Uh, you get 40, you get one less than 49 with four zeros after it, 490,000. So that would be this answer right here. Uh, this next problem looks a little intimidating. 132 times 16, I don't know how to figure that out. Uh, but fortunately... You have a 16 in each of these terms, so you could factor out a 16 and say it's 16 times 132 times 127, sorry, 132 minus 127. Well, 132 minus 127 is just 5, and 5 times 16 is 80. So this answer right here will be 80, and maybe I'll write because 16 times 132 minus 127 is just 16 times 5 which maybe you can do in your head, um, or you could cut this in half and double this to get eight times 10, but something like that to get you 80. Our last one here says 25 times this ridiculously large number. This one's hard. However, just like I did here, I could say, well, this would be the same as 50 times half of this number, or 100 times 1 fourth of this number. And the nice thing about this number that I chose here Maybe I'll do it in two steps. I'll say that this equals 50 times half of this number, which would be 82,424. Because half of 16 is the eight, half of four is the two, half of eight is the four, half of four is the two, half of eight is the four. And just like this number was chosen to be able to be cut in half pretty easily, it was also chosen to be cut in fourths pretty easily. So you could go from this first row down to this last row, or you could do it in two steps where you cut this thing in half again, and get that it's 100 times, uh, if you cut this in half, you'll get 41 to 12. And 100 times 41 to 12 is just 41 to 12 with two zeros at the end. Um, so the final answer would be 4,121,200. Uh, so I guess these are my answers. There's the logic on how one could do these in their head. And I'll call this good and end this video here.